Paris Peace Treaty of 1814, the British decided to go back to their old base in James Island in order to reoccupy the island. But when they realized the island was in ruins or in a bad condition, the founding of Banjul, in 1814, Britain and France signed a peace treaty called the Paris Peace Treaty in order to end the long rivalry between Britain and France over Senegal and region. After the British, after the Paris Peace Treaty of 1814, the British decided to go back to their old base in James Island in order to reoccupy the island. But when they realized the island was in ruins or in a bad condition, and there was a need for them to police or to abolish the transatlantic slave trade, they need a well strategical location in order for them to see the movement of the ship across the Atlantic Ocean in order to seize and return the slaves to their place. There was a need for them to have a well strategical location. That's why on the 23rd of April, 1816, a British captain called Captain Sir Alexander Grant, he went to Banjul and obtained battles from the King of Combo called Tumani Boya by the annual payment of 113 bars of ions, which was equivalent to 25 British pounds. Before the bar of Banjul in 1816, Banjul served as a hideout for runaway slaves. It also served as a hideout for criminals, and it also served as a source of barba trees or ropes for time of ruminant animals. So when Battles was founded in 1816, the British official, for example, Sir Charles McCarthy, who was the governor at that time, he went to Gore and brought him some 50 soldiers. He also brought Amazons, carpenters, and laborers. So these people were engaged in the burning of oyster cells for life. They also engaged in the mining of stones at Dog Island, which was seven miles away from Banyu. So before the rainy season, they had finished construction, major public buildings in Batos. Some of the major de developments that had happened in Banyu include the construction of judicial house, the establishment of a large center at the heart of Banyu called Makati Square, which was named after the British governor called Sir Charles Makati. They also established a military barracks, they also built a prisons. They also established hospitals called the RVTH, now called the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospitals. These are some of the. This is a brief biography or a brief history about the founding of Banjo in 1816, the growth and the development of Banjo. When Batos was founded in 1816, the governor of Banjo was called Charles McCarthy. He went to Gore and brought him some 50 soldiers. Masons, carpenters, for the development of Banjo. He built a military barracks for the soldiers who were brought in from Gore Island. Now, some of the British officials were engaged in the burning of oyster cells for the construction. Some of them were assigned to travel all the way to Dog Island to mine stone for the construction of battles. Before the end of the rainy season, they had finished construction of major public buildings inside Banjo. The major public buildings that were constructed in Batos when it was founded in 1816 were the judicial house. This judicial house was meant for the judges to carry out their work effectively and efficiently. They also built a military barracks in order to station the British officials in those military barracks. The British also established the two central prisons in order to capture or to keep the convicts who commit crime in the society. In 1820, a British colonial engineer by the name Bogle, he came from Sierra Leone to the Gambia in order to set out a plan for the development of Banjo. He designed a plan for the construction of roads, and many roads were, or many roads were constructed in Banjo. And these roads were named after British officers. For example, there is a road or a street which was constructed by the British and named after a British official called Bogle. That's why we have Bogle Street in Banjo. We also have a street called the Picton Street. It was also named after a British officer. We also have the Orange Street, the Hill Street, as well as the Cotton Street. So these are major developments that had happened in Banyu after the founding of Banyu by the British in 1816. And Botos also was divided into different districts or wards. And in these wards or districts, they were named after British officers. Some of the streets or wards in Banyu, it includes the Jolof Town. It's a ward which was divided, or which was partitioned by the British after the founding of Batos. We also have the Jola Town. We also have the Jolof Town, 
and also the Makum town. These were some of the streets, or oh, these streets that are found in Banyul when Batos was founded by the British in 1816. So this is the development of Banyul. This is for the founding of Banyul. One of the reasons for the founding of Banyul was as a result of the Paris Peace Treaty. The Paris Peace Treaty of 1814. It recognized the British control over River Gambia, while the French control over River Senegal in order to end the long hatred between the British and the French in the Senegambian region. Yes. Banyul also was founded to serve as a trading center for the British merchant. When the British lost their trading center in Gore, Senegal, when Batos was founded in 1860. Because Batos was found around the coastal areas of the Gambia. So it's a well strategic location where the British merchant could trade and generate huge amount of profit. It was also founded to serve as a settlement center for the liberated slave or for the free slave in Sierra Leone when the slave trade was abolished in 1807. The black Africans were reported back to Sierra Leone free town. Now Sierra Leone was very congested. It was highly populated. In order to reduce the population of Sierra Leone, some slaves were brought in the Gambia and settled in Batos, Makati Island, as well as Bar. So Batos was founded in order to serve as a trading center or as a settlement center for the free slave or the liberated slave. But it also was founded to serve as a settlement center for the mulattoes. The mulattoes, these were the offsprings of the Europeans when Batos was founded in 1816. The British officials brought the mulattoes from Gore and also from Freetown to settle in Batos. These are some of the reasons for the founding of Banyul in 1816. The problems or the obstacles of the founding of Banyul. When Batos was founded in 1816, what are some of the developments that the free slaves or the liberated slaves who were brought in Batos, Makati and Janjamure faced? One of the problems faced by the early settlers after the founding of Banyul was language barrier. Because these people were African at the initial stage, captured and taken into the New World. And from the New World, they were repatriated back to the Gambia. So they faced with the problem of language because they find it very difficult to communicate effectively and efficiently with the people of the Gambia at that time. Now, two, past climatic conditions. The climate was not favorable to the Gambian people or to the liberated Africans who were brought in in battles. They faced with harsh climatic conditions and disease, which resulted to the death of many slaves in Africa. So harsh climatic condition is a problem that they encounter during their stay in the Gambia. Now three, housing problems or problem of accommodations. The free slave or the liberated slave when they were brought in Africa or in the Gambia, they faced with the problem of accommodations. They find it very difficult to have a place where they are going to stay with their families, which is a problem that really affect some of the free slaves who were brought in in the Gambia. Four, poor transportation network. The early settlers or the free slave, they find it very difficult to move or to fly from one region of the country to another due to a transportation network. Transportation problem, they find it very difficult to move from one part of the country to another due to the inadequate or bad road conditions. The early settlers or the free slaves also faced with the problem of hostile attacks. Some of them were attacked by the indigenous Gambians who settled here before the coming of the liberated slaves in the Gambia. So it's a problem that they face. Most of them were attacked by these Gambians and most of them also were killed. Now six, they also face a problem of Soninke Marabo. Because when they came and settled in battles at that time, there was a jihadist war or a holy war which was going on called the Soninke Marabo. This was the war that transpired between the Soninkes and also the Muslim scholars. Most of the Soninkes were killed because the Marabos were very, very powerful, which affected the state of the free slave or the liberated slaves in the Gambia. Now the effects of the founding of Banjul. The effects, the impact or the shortcomings of the founding of Banjul. One of the effects of the founding of Banjul, it transformed Banjul into a city center when Batas was founded in 1816. Now before the founding of Banjul, Batas served or Banjul served as a hideout for the runaway slaves. It also served as a hideout for the criminals and it also served as a source of power trees for the tying of ruminant animals. So when Batos was founded in 1816, the then governor of Banyu called Sir Charles Makati. He did a tremendous job in the development of Banyu. He transformed Banyu into a city center and became the capital city after the Banyu and Gambia gained their political independence from the hands of their colonial masters. Two, it led to the settlements of different ethnic groups in the country. The liberated slaves were brought and settled in the Gambia. The mulattoes also were brought and settled in the Gambia. So it leads to the settlement of different peoples in the country. 
3. It also leads to the abolition of Britain's Atlantic slave trade in 1807. When the slave trade was abolished in 1807, still we have other Europeans who are coming in the Gambia and taking slaves to the New World. But in order to totally stop or to police the transatlantic slave trade, there was a need for a well strategic location in order to stop the taking of slaves from the Gambia to the New World. So Barbados was founded, or the founding of Banyu contributed immensely to the suppression or to the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade in 1807. For it also led to the introduction of Christianity. Because when Barbados was founded in 1816, the then governor was called Charles Al Mac Sir Charles Makati. He went to Britain and appealed to the Christian missionaries to activists to come into the Gambia in order to introduce Western education and Christianity. Following that appeal, the missionaries also started to come into the Gambia. The first one to arrive were called the Quakers. They arrived in 1821. Two months later, another batch of missionaries also arrived in the Gambia called the Methodists. After the Methodists, the Anglican also arrived and also the Roman Catholics. Each of these Christian missionaries, they established schools. They also built clinic. They introduced their religion called Christianity, which the government people also accepted. So the founding of Banyu also contributed to the introduction of Christianity. Four, it also led to the introduction of Western education. When Batos was founded, the Europeans or the British, they established their schools. For example, a school was built called the Methodist Boys High School. Another school was also built called the Methodist Girls High School. These two schools were later joined together called the Gambia Senior Secondary School. Six, it also increased the influence of the British in the country. Because when Batos was founded in 1816, the British governor called Charles McCarthy, he went to Gore Island or Gore and brought in some British soldiers. He also went to Free Town Serena and also brought some British soldiers and also invited some British soldiers from Britain to the Gambia. So when they came, they established military barracks. So it increased the British influence in the country. It also increased the rate of colonialism in the country. When Batas was founded, it paved the way for the European tribes to introduce their system of administration called the indirect rule system. So the effects of the founding of Banyu also increased the British I mean, influence in the country and also increased the rate of colonialism in, in the Gambia. So this is all about the founding of Banos in 1816.